Hi, this is your host, Sapil Bharatiya, and we are here at Open Source Summit in Bilbao, Spain. And today we have with us Sebastian Stell, core contributor to the Open Tofu project. Uh, Sebastian, it's great to have you on the show. Great to be here. And this is going to be an interesting discussion, and uh, it, it can go in so many different directions. But we'll try to focus on uh, one core constituent that I really care about is users and customers. Yeah. You know, uh, folks, companies, they do a lot of things over the whole life cycle. Uh, but I would avoid going there. We will talk about that briefly, but the focus will be more about open to foo, what you folks are doing, what is the goal. Yeah. Uh, so before we get into uh, the, the whole announcement that was made yesterday, let's start with the problem area. Uh, what did HashiCarb do that led to creation of first uh, uh, open TF that you are involved with that project, and then open to so let's start with the problem area first. Yeah. So uh, first of all, uh, we're immensely grateful. Uh, everyone at Open Tofu is incredibly grateful uh, for all the work that Mitchell and and Armin and HashiCorp has made. Um, Vault is amazing. Terraform is amazing. All the products that they they've they've released over the years are just. <clears throat> groundbreaking, amazing products, and it's, it's we're incredible, incredibly grateful as well that the, those products started out as as open source products. So we're incredibly grateful for all of the work that they've done uh, up to now, and incredibly grateful for Terraform and and all the products um, for for reasons that we don't uh, that that we perhaps don't quite agree with, uh, but that are within entirely within their rights, they decided to uh, stop the stop the products from being open source, and they're now under a business source license. Um, and so with the community, we decided that uh, we we believed in, in, uh, in the future of the product uh, strongly enough that we wanted to continue an open source path for Terraform. And so with the community, we got together and we made a fork under the MPL license. That fork is called Open Tofu. And... Um, uh, it's also under the MPL and it continues uh, uh, just uh, uh, as is. We are seeing this trend, you know, uh, recently where uh, companies, they start off with open source license, uh, uh, large communities built around that. It's not just a community of developers, contributors, but also users who rely and depend on it. And then suddenly they decide to change the license, leaving the, the whole ecosystem high and dry. Yep. How worried are you about that, this, this trend? I would say moderately, uh, but but overall not. It's just been incredibly humbling to see the speed at which the community got together and made a viable fork of Terraform. Um, it's just hard to believe that just five weeks ago, they relicensed the, the, their products to no longer be open source. In five weeks, we've been able to get together uh, I think it's something like 800 developers, 150 organizations. We got 41,000 stars on GitHub. Uh, we got enterprises, small businesses, uh, individual contributors um, involved, and uh, and now we're part of the uh, it's part of the Linux Foundation. And it's just five weeks is an incredibly compressed timeline to to achieve all that. And it wouldn't be possible if it, if it weren't for all the fur, uh, fur, uh, all the faith and the 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 fervor in uh, in open source in general and uh, and so it's it's uh, to, to answer your question um, yeah there there are some elements that are worrying but um, but uh, I think overall it's just open source communities are very powerful and um, and I, I don't I don't think it's a good idea to 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 try to screw over a community remember before the interview started I was talking about, I used to be a big fan of Michael Crichton in Jurassic yeah. Park he live he wrote that live finds way the open source community, you know, that finds it way. Uh, yeah. And so same, you know, I know, I find a new term that open source, you know, it always That's finds a way. Good. Yeah, <laughs> I was talking, right. And um, also the larger community that you build around your product and product, the harder it will be yeah. to turn that product and project into uh, proprietary because the community will come in. And yeah. yes, it is really impressive uh, that the community, you know, came together and, you know, with the first open DF and then open tofu, does that also send a, a message to these these companies? You know, sometimes you know, I don't want to once again get into the reason. Yeah. A very strong message that no, this is not the right way to start with open source. If you really want, you start with the proprietary software code. Nobody has a problem yeah. with that. Yeah. But starting with open source building. So, do you think that this will also send a message to a lot of other companies who might be thinking because overall? It is bad for the ecosystem, it's yeah. bad for the customer, and it's also bad for the whole venture capitalist, all the startups as well. I kind of think about it this way. There are really three pillars to strong, vibrant open source products. Um, you have to have an open license, obviously. You have to be open to the community, 
to let anybody involved uh, in, in decisions, etc. And you have to develop in the open. It has to be clear where you want the product to go and what, when you accept or don't accept features, um, that has to be very clear. And there's a number of venture-backed companies that make products that are open source but only have one of the pillars. They're just technically open source because they're under an open source license, but they're missing the open community and they're missing the, de the open development. And so I think one of the reasons Open Tofu uh, has has had so much traction and grew so, fa so fast is because we're 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 uh, we're starting a project that has all three pillars. Um, we are open to the community. We are letting anyone, uh, and the Linux Foundation is super helpful for for making that happen. We're, we're we're open to anyone contributing, and we're also developing in the in the open, making it clear. Uh, what the product direction is, um, or what the project direction is, and um, and when we're the, what features we'll accept, and, and which, which features are not aligned, um, and and none of those decisions are made in the back room, um, uh, in uh, without community involvement. So we have an RFC process, all of that. Just in the political world, they're like rhinos and dinos. Yeah. <laughs> so same thing with open source, oh, sinos, open, open source, source name, name only. only. <laughs> That's right, yeah. And now let's talk about Open Tofu. When you folks responded to create uh, OpenTF and then what led to creation of Open Tofu? In the, the very first iteration, uh, we, we, we chose the, nom uh, the name OpenTF um, because, uh, no, because it, it pointed, Pointed very well to, to what we intended to, what we want the project to be, um, and then um, uh, and then we decided that uh, with the Linux Foundation we decided that we need the Linux Foundation is great at providing not just technical governance, uh, so they they've helped us create the technical steering committee, etc. But they're also great with legal and security and all of the other things that a project needs to be successful long term when there's sometimes competing interests. And so they've provided us with a legal framework that has led to us file the trademarks, file the uh, contributor license agreements, and all of the things to make sure that the project is on a very, very sure uh, legal standing. And so the, the, the change of name was, was, um, was made in part to make it easy to search and easy to find information, documentation, et cetera. But also in, a part of it is just to make sure that enterprises can adopt the product without any sort of uh, IP uh, issues. Now let's also talk about users and customers who were or who are using Terraform, but because of the license change, they might not be able yeah. to use it. Is OpenTofu going to be a kind of drop-in replacement for it? Uh, what does it mean for compatibility? How how you will ensure future compatibility? How, because we don't when it, we look at this whole ecosystem, we don't work in isolation. You know, we mix and match a lot of things. Yep. So the impact on customer and how open to is going to be a fully drop and replacement, or is just a patchwork for yeah. now? So fantastic, fantastic question. So um, to, to to answer that question, you need to provide a little bit of context. Think of a very large organization like yesterday on stage, Alliance was talking about um, their 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 usage. Um, they're uh, one of the largest insurance companies in the world. They use Terraform very extensively uh, across teams across continents, and so they have a very large Terraform code base. And when HashiCorp decided to uh, change the source uh, the the licensing to the business source license, all of that code instantly became a liability. And so they had to choose a path forward. Um, and when, uh, when Open Tofu uh, was announced, they, they were very excited at the, uh, at the prospect of taking that and, and using the drop-in replacement that Open Tofu is to be able to make, make sure there's a path forward that stays open source so that they can continue to have that code base and, and all the work that they've done to make sure they can continue to use that. Um, and so it's, it's, it's vital for us to, to do two things. One. Um, open Tofu must be and is backwards compatible with uh, with uh, with Terraform, and two, it needs to be uh, for a company or for any enterprise. It needs to be possible for teams individually to move to Open Tofu without requiring uh, an organization wide movement to it. So that allows for a lot more agility. Allows for people on their own time, teams on their own timeline, to migrate to to Open Tofu, um, and because it's a drop-in replacement, you just keep your code as is. You just change a few, you change your binary to use Tofu, um, and uh, and you're good to go. And when we look at Open Tofu, uh, or if you look at a lot of other projects which are within Linux Foundation umbrellas, 
open source can easily, like when you talk about big organizations, they have all the resources. A lot yeah. of other companies, they don't have resources. That's why they go with the commercial players. Yeah. So is open tofu going to be just a project or just like Kubernetes or Linux kernel? There will be a vendor ecosystem around that. So folks can, because uh, with, first of all, without commercialization, open source doesn't succeed. Yeah. But the commercialization should be around right. the open source, you know, code base. So, do you also envision an ecosystem around open tofu? There actually already is. There's, uh, there's, uh, I think two two dozen vendors uh, that are already providing services on top of open tofu. Um, and and so the the way I think about it is, that on one side you have like a single vendor ecosystem, and on the other side you have a, um, a, a, a an ecosystem with many many options. And in, in the history has shown us time and time again that uh, open source tends to uh, become a winner takes all um, s sort of uh, sort of game, and uh, we're seeing PyTorch just completely overtake um, um, TensorFlow. And I think I, I think that's that, that ties back to those three pillars I was talking about. Like once once you have an open source project that is accepting of the community that that develops in the open, um, people gravitate towards that, and then it becomes self reinforcing. Self reinforcing. You have uh, you have more options, more tools around it, and then the more tools that there are, the more valuable it is, and the more incentive there is for to choose it. And 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 then you you have this kind of virtuous cycle where there's more and more adoption. After this release, you know, everything will be released under business source license at Terraform. What does it mean for open tofu community? Because you folks will have to kind of diverge on a totally different path. Yep. Uh, so can you talk about that? Once again, the Linux Foundation's provided us with amazing legal guidance and, um, uh, and, and very helpful, um, a very helpful framework for, for um, for making sure the product is is, via, is is successful long term, and one of the one of that is um, is a uh, Scott. He's he's a counsel at uh, at the Linux Foundation, um, and uh, and so working with him, we developed a series of guidelines for developers that will work uh, that uh, that are working on Open Tofu, and one of them is um, they should not and they must not look at any Terraform code, um, and so we're relying on the community. When they see that Open Tofu um, perhaps has a bug or something like that, they will report um, what the uh, what, what the what, what the problem is, and the developers working on Open Tofu will only rely on the, the the bug reports and only rely on the uh, the behaviors, um, and they will not uh, look at any Terraform code to before developing open tofu code and that's to make sure that there's no ip issues whatsoever with open tofu so there's a very rigid very uh bulletproof process by which we will write code uh, for open tofu to make sure that there's no copyright infringement to make sure that the that the code base is is clean as you said you know that developers are not supposed to and they must and they will not look at the terraform code what i want to understand is that, does that mean that open tofu will kind of become a parallel uh, like there are a lot of open source projects which are created as a replacement for proprietary code base yeah. right and, and and they build a much larger community you know, as compared to the original project or product that was there. So is to open tofu also moving in that direction that it will become an answer to a lot of problems in that space? Yeah, 100%. Um, so open tofu will no longer share a, a code base with, with Terraform um, uh, because, uh, because it's now proprietary. Um, that being said, uh, it, it won't share like the, the the code written for Terraform will won't be moved and won't be copied into into Open Tofu. That being said, it is still a core tenet of Open Tofu to be interoperable, to be backwards compatible, uh, and to be a drop in replacement. So uh, so the code bases will eventually diverge over time, but the compatibility with all the providers, the compatibility with the with the uh, the, the the, the, the core binary that will continue for, for a while, and so it'll be implemented separately. But you will not be able to uh, provide a, you know binary compatibility like f one year from now when the code is diverged too much. Again, great question. Um, the the goal is to provide long term a hundred percent interoperability. That means that um, 
that uh, say a year from now, if uh, HashiCorp adds some new feature to 1.7 or 1.8, then we will rely on the community to, um, through an RFC process, to say, hey, this is a this is a cool feature. We think OpenTofu should have that as well. There'll be an RFC process during which the community can say, yeah, we agree, we disagree. And, um, and then we will uh, consider implementing that if that's what the community wants. And if so, we will implement it in a manner without looking at any code that, that has been written for Terraform. Um, and so that makes sure that we are able to re uh, remain interoperable, where uh, enterprises can still move to OpenTofu and the teams that are maybe lagging a little bit behind, they can do that at their own speed. Um, and uh, and, uh, and OpenTofu will, will have that interoperability. And in a second phase, after the first, after like after the main goal of, of drop and replacement and interoperable, there's um, there will be features and functionalities suggested by the community that Terraform won't have. And so over time, OpenTofu will have everything Terraform has. But and more. Tofu, and more, right? And so that's the power of open source. And after a while, like when you start getting 50 or 100 organizations kind of contributing to, to open tofu, it, it becomes a game of catch up for, ha for HashiCorp. Um, and, um, and we hope one day that HashiCorp will come to its senses and join us uh, at the Linux Foundation and join open tofu. Um, and open tofu will be, become their upstream. And, and <laughs> exactly. And then uh, that will be a glorious day and, and we'll be incredibly happy to, to, to welcome them. It has happened before. Uh, Linux in the early days when uh, Google has started working on Android, you know, yeah. Linux was not happy and then eventually they merged the code base yeah. and it happened. Will it be wrong to say that open tofu is being driven by the user community who were suddenly shocked by this announcement. So this is more or less like a user community driven project where all the users, as you gave example, they are trying to build it to solve their problem. That's right. Um, I'm a user. Um, uh, I'm a, I've been a user of Terraform. And now I'm now an OpenTofu user. Um, and uh, and all the folks that have been contributing to OpenTofu so far have started out as, as Terraform users. And so we're first and foremost a community of, of folks that love Terraform. Um, and, and I emphasize that. We, we love that product. Um, and we're excited to, to continue its path, um, uh, continue the, an open source path for it. But, but fundamentally, we, we were, and this is why I was saying I'm incredible, incredibly grateful to, um, to Mitchell. Um, uh, it has changed the, the, the world of infrastructure. It's made managing infrastructure cleaner, simpler, uh, easier to document. Uh, it's just it's a 10x improvement over what was available before. And... Um, uh, and so that's why we're so passionate about uh, about this. And um, and I think um, the, going back to these three pillars I was talking about, we're, we're excited about an even better future for it. One last question before we wrap this up is that uh, is it also possible for a lot of large enterprise customers to continue to use Terraform for some use cases and use OpenTofu for a lot of development other use cases? Um, yeah, uh, I can see that happening for 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 years. Uh, large organizations have hundreds of teams that move that have different priorities and I can see a team uh, using Terraform for a while and 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 while the majority uses open tofu um, that being said I do think that in the medium to long term horizon there won't be much of a reason to use Terraform as I, I believe that the velocity of an of an openly developed community first project um, that that velocity is is very hard to keep up with for one organization uh, alone. Um, and so I think there will be less and less reasons to, to use a proprietary product versus an open source one that's superior. Can you also talk about what does it mean for uh, cloud providers and their users with the open tof experience? I can't speak for those organizations, of course, but uh, I would say that it's uh, it, it's fairly obvious that the, the these organizations, they care about the user experience, they care about the developer experience uh, of their users. And because OpenTofu is an open community uh, project, it is uh, much easier for them to contribute and improve the developer experience for, for their customers. And so I can see a world in which uh, all the cloud providers end up uh, massively embracing OpenTofu because it, it helps them provide a better developer experience for, for their customers. And, uh, and uh, that's going to be great for the community. That's going to be great for the world of infrastructure. I'd also say that um, just from like a strategic perspective, it's, um, and again, I'm speculating, but I would say that um, it's a little bit dangerous for a, a big cloud provider like that to let an organization that's, that they don't have any control over uh, be the intermediary between, uh, between their customers and them. Uh, if you think about it, if you're using Amazon today and you're using Terraform, then your experience 
using Amazon products is going to be limited by how well Terraform works and how well the AWS provider works for Terraform. Whereas for Open Tofu, um, Amazon could uh, join forces and they could improve Open Tofu so that it works better for their customers. And so I can see a, a, a world as well in which the cloud providers um, um, that care very deeply about the developer experience that they they prefer working with Open Tofu uh, in order to get closer to their customers and in order to provide a better DX. Sebastian, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about Open Tofu. And uh, I love that we focus more on the customers, how we're solving problems for them. So thanks for all those insights, and I would love to chat with you again yeah, when there's new updates and products. Yeah, and you, you ask great questions, and this was a very fun conversation.